Hi, uh, I'm Colin Adams from Williams College, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the mathematical theory of knots. Now, in the mathematical theory of knots, what we do is we take a string, I'm going to use this toy to demonstrate, and we tie a knot in the string, but the important point is that we glue the two loose ends of the string together, in this case snap the, knot, the toy closed, to trap a knot on the string. And so if I started playing with this and I tried to disentangle it, I can move it around, I still consider that the same knot, but in fact I would never succeed in getting that knot off the string. Now the first question you might ask about this idea of knots is why would anybody care to actually study knots like this? And so that's what we'd like to consider right now is why should we study the mathematical theory of knots? There turn out to be some very interesting applications of knot theory. The first one I want to talk about is DNA. So if you think about DNA, DNA is a long skinny molecule. It's been described as stuffing 200 kilometers of fishing line into a basketball when it's sitting inside the nucleus of a cell. And yet it has to be able to do transcription and recombination. It has to be able to create copies of itself that it can separate out in order to actually split a nucleus and therefore a cell apart into more than one cell. Now how is it going to do that if it's all tangled up like this? Well it turns out that it uses not theoretic properties in order to do it. There are certain molecules inside the nucleus of the cell, enzymes, that will take two strands of DNA, bring them up next to each other, pass the one through the other, and then close it back up in order to knot and unknot the DNA. So inside the nucleus of our cell all the time, these enzymes, these so-called topoisomerases, are knotting and unknotting DNA. And that's actually been used in a new chemotherapy drug that prevents DNA from knotting and unknotting and therefore can prevent a tumor from spreading. Now a second application of knot theory is to the field of synthetic chemistry. So for instance, in synthetic chemistry, you can have a sequence of atoms bonded end to end in order to form a circle. An example would be a benzene molecule, okay? Now, imagine that you take that molecule, you break it open, and then you tie a knot in it. So I take a knot inside there, and then I glue the two loose ends together. Now when I do that, I can get a new molecule that has completely different properties, even though it consists of the same set of atoms, bonded in exactly the same order, but because it's knotted, it behaves completely differently than the knotted molecule. So synthetic chemists are very, very excited about this idea. So now let's ask the question, well, if you're going to knot on the molecular level, how do you do that? Because on the molecular level, how do you tie a knot on the molecular level? And in particular, if we model the bonds between atoms as sticks, you might ask the question, well, how many atoms would I need to have to make a knotted molecule? And so in particular, that's asking the question, how many sticks do I need in order to make a given knot? Imagining those sticks as being the bonds between the atoms that are occurring at the endpoints at the vertices. Okay? So you can imagine making all kinds of different knotted molecules using this idea of sticks. So the first question we want to ask is, well, how many sticks does it take to make a knotted molecule? Okay? So in particular, we're just going to ask, how many sticks does it take to make a given knot? Okay? So let's see if we can answer that question. So for instance, we could ask, can you make a knot with three sticks? Now if you think about three sticks, what can you make if they're glued end to end? All you can make is a triangle. And if you think about a triangle, a triangle will never be knotted because it lies in the plane, it doesn't have any crossings in its picture, and therefore the answer is no. Three sticks do not suffice in order to make a, a non-trivial knot. What about four sticks? If I have four sticks to work with, is that enough to make a non-trivial knot? Well, Think about what, I could, what shapes I could make with four sticks. I could make either a little bow tie or I could make a little square. And in both cases I would be able to disentangle those. In the case of the bow tie I could just do a quick switch and I could get rid of the crossing. In the case of the square there are no crossings so both of those are again trivial knots. All right? What about for five sticks? So let's think about five sticks for a second. With five sticks, well, let's try modeling it ourselves. So everybody that's watching this, you can try this for yourself. Everybody has five sticks. And if you think about the five sticks you have, you have this part of your arm here, this part of your arm here, so that's one stick, two stick, a stick going right across your shoulders from one shoulder to the other, another stick here, another stick here. So that we're born with these five sticks. And the question is, can you take these five sticks and can you actually knot them? So I have to figure a way to hook my arms together and then hold my hands in order to make a non-trivial knot. And if you try this for a little bit, don't hurt yourselves, if you try this for a little bit, you're going to discover very quickly that in fact, no, you cannot actually knot them. Okay? It doesn't actually work. Now, how can I prove that it doesn't work? Now this is kind of an interesting question. How do I prove that I couldn't succeed? This is one of my favorite arguments in mathematics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my sticks, and that's this right here, I'm going to take one stick, and I'm going to use that 
and I'm going to imagine that I have a knot made from five sticks. This one and four others. All right? And I'm going to draw a picture of that knot. Again, this is all inside my head that I'm thinking about this. And I'm going to imagine picturing that knot when I look straight down this stick right here. So imagine I'm looking straight down one stick, keeping, keeping in mind I have four other sticks that are hanging off it. Okay? If I drew the picture of what I would see, notice this stick, the long one that's pointed straight at you, would appear as just a single point, just a single dot. And then there would be four other sticks off of it. What would it look like? It would look exactly like one of these two pictures right here, this one here, or the one next to it uh, right over here. Okay? Because I'd only see four sticks and therefore it would be unknotted. So five sticks are not enough to make a non-trivial knot. Okay? What about six sticks? Well, let's think about six sticks for just a second here. With six sticks, I'm going to use the five sticks I was born with plus this six stick and I'm going to see if I can make a non-trivial knot. So let's see if I can do this. I'm going to bring this through here. I'm going to bring this through here. And then I'm going to, oops, and then I'm going to bring it over here. And there is a knot made from six sticks. And I have to kind of straighten my wrist because otherwise I'm cheating. So if I straighten my wrist and there I have a six stick knot. So I can actually make a six stick knot and this is the first time you can actually make a non-trivial knot with sticks. Um, in particular, what does the picture look like? It looks like this. And so there's a six stick, it's called a six stick trefoil knot. And you'll notice I have labels on the vertices of that particular knot. The P stands for in the plane. L stands for low beneath the plane, H stands for high above the plane. And so I could actually construct that particular knot out of sticks and I could see that in fact I could construct that knot with six sticks. Okay? But an interesting question is how many sticks does it take to make a given knot? And what we've seen for this particular knot is it takes six sticks. Now let's take a look at another example. Suppose I took two knots and I glued them together. So this is called the composition of these two trefoil knots. T stands for trefoil knot. And I have a composition of them. To make one of those, you'll remember what we just saw, it took six sticks. And the question is, how many sticks does it take to make two of them? So let's take a look at the picture here. Turns out that you can actually do that with eight sticks. That you only need two additional sticks in it to the sticks that you had originally in order to actually make a knot with uh, th that is a composition of two trefoils, just two extra sticks, which is somewhat surprising. And if you take a look at a composition of n trefoils, so I've glued n of these knots together, well each time you add another knot it turns out you only have to add two sticks. And so ultimately what students and I showed was that the stick number of a composition of n trefoils is exactly four. That's the four from the first knot plus two more for the first knot plus two n an additional two sticks for every other knot as we go on up. So what's left to do? What are the things that people would like to know about uh, how many sticks it takes to make a knot? Well here's some examples. Number one, find the stick number for the two braids. So these knots that you see over here, these are called the two braids. They're just a sequence of two strands that are wrapped around each other. And surprisingly enough we don't know the stick number for this sequence of knots. You'd think we'd know that. It's a very simple sequence of knots, but that's still open. Number two, find the stick number for a composition of a bunch of trefoils and one other knot, which is called the figure eight knot. If I just add a different knot on the end, I don't know the stick numbers. Even though I know it for a composition of n trefoils, I do not know it in this case. And number three, just find the stick number for the eight, nine, and ten crossing knots. So these are knots that can be drawn in pictures of eight, nine, or ten crossings. And surprisingly enough, we still don't know the stick numbers for all of those knots. So there's lots of interesting questions still open with, with regard to this question of how many sticks does it take to make a knot. So those are some examples of particular uh, areas that knot theory is applied to. 30, 40 years ago there really weren't any applications of knot theory, but now there are many, many applications and it turns out to be a very interesting area of mathematics.